LRC, I put in a limit for 590. It sold finally. I mean, I bought it finally. It was around 602, 604, something like that. It's pretty good. You can make a lot of money putting in limit orders if uh, if you're careful. If you have a bottom limit order where you want to sell it at, um, buy it at six like I did, uh, five ninety like I did, or or say you want you want to buy it at six and sell it at eight, or you want to buy it at six and sell it at nine. It may not hit nine. It may not hit six uh, eight. But if it does and you have a thousand shares and you bought it at six and you sell it at eight and you have a thousand shares, that's two thousand dollars you made. Um, same if you wait until it hits nine you can sometimes gauge a stock by by the wild fluctuations you can look at the 52 week low and the 52 week high and you can see where it bounces around a lot and so if there's like a four or five or six dollar difference between uh the bottom price and the top price there's some wiggle room that you may or may not be able to take advantage of. You may decide that, well, you know, it's, it went up to $17. Uh, if it goes up to $15, i will sell it, and I bought it at 9 Things like that can make you a lot of money. A lot of people hedge. They'll say, okay, I bought it at 6 but if it ever goes down to five fifty, I'll want to sell it so I can preserve the money I have, just in case. I don't want it to go down to 4 and lose all that money. So I'll put in uh, a limit that will sell it at, uh, say, 550. But then they want to put in a limit on the higher end in case it goes up to that price. They want to stop it from going any lower than a certain price, and they want to sell it at a higher price. So if you have a limit, if you have an order for 850, and it hits 850 before it hits uh, 450, then you made then you locked your profit in. A lot of people want to do stuff like that. Uh, day traders, day, day traders are different. They'll buy something at the price of whatever it is, and then they'll um, they'll sell it at a, a, a higher price if it gets. I don't know if they're putting in limit orders. They probably are putting in limit orders to sell, so they can lock in their their um, price. Because if you do market orders, market orders will execute immediately. And so you don't know what second that your stock will sell at the market. Now I said I made some, I uh, bought some ORC at 590. I put in that limit order when it was around 604, 602, something like that. And I had to wait a few days, and it did execute. I got the uh, the word today that it did execute, so it's been a few days and it executed. And I did some uh, sales of stock because I wanted to raise some capital for some stuff so limit orders can be used on the bottom end to cut your losses and then on the higher end to increase your profit you got to make sure that you don't overshoot the price like if you say i want nine dollars and it hits 8.99 and it never hits nine dollars and then it goes back down to 8.74 you missed an opportunity. But then again, if you put it in at nine and it goes to 957, what can, it, what can you tell me? You gotta be careful with limit orders, but if you're, if you're content, if you're content to make one or $2 and it goes up uh, three or four or $5 and you don't care as long as you make your one or $2, uh, you hedge your money, you take your money and then you do it again and again and again, you can make some money that way. It's up to you how you want to try to uh, harvest your wealth. A lot of ways. Day traders, which I'm not a day trader, will go in with, a th uh, with some money and they'll buy a stock or 10 stocks or 100 stocks, well, 100 stocks or whatever, 10, 20, 100 stocks, whatever they can afford, and hope the price will go up. You can, a lot of the times, the, the cycle will repeat itself. Sometimes at certain times of the year, a stock might be at $10 and it'll go up to 14. If that's consistent, you can put in a limit to buy it at 10 and another limit to sell it at 14 and make $4 a share if it's consistent. I haven't seen that yet, but it's possible that you can do that. And then um, I'm talking about limits mostly, but then 
Then there are people like um, speculators who can gauge when the price of a stock is going to break through the resistance and then they buy it when it breaks through the resistance and then they wait and then they sell it. They take their money and run. You can do that too. At this time, I'm preferring the more cautious, conservative way of purchasing stock. I prefer going long on stock. Uh, I do put in limits from time to time so I can maximize my dividends. Uh, ORC is a good stock to look at because what happened, I noticed that the ORC, you buy the stock on the X date. And then about a month later, 28 days later, whatever it is, payday. Two days after that is the next X date. So if you choose to plow your money back in to ORC, as soon as you get your dividend and you put it right back in the same stock, it'll compound. But it's a month layover. Sometimes you'll get a stock that has a two-week layover, and that's pretty good. Because if you can line it up with another stock that has a two-week layover, then you can put dividend, on, dividend upon dividend upon dividend upon dividend and play against each other. You can do that too. But as far as ORC, <clears throat> if you're making 12% or 12 point whatever percent, and you plow that straight back in, you're making at least one per, over 1% 1 a month. Um, at the end of the year, you're going to get more than that 12% because you're plowing, you're going to have... Um, dividend on top of the dividend because the dividend you know, the interest on top of interest the compound interest if you want to look at it that way so looking at again the order you want to make that order your limit order you want the limit order at the low price to increase dividends and if you're trying to sell the stock at a higher price to get your, to get your, um, it's not a yield, your profit. If you made two dollars per share, and you have a thousand shares, you made two grand. Now, can you take that two grand and wait for the and put in another limit and wait for the stock to go down and increase your yield? You can do that. Limit orders are very beneficial if you learn how to do it properly. Uh, speculators, I'm not going to talk about speculators right now. They wait, sometimes, they, like, okay, I will. They want to break through the resistance level, and then it'll go way up, and then they'll, they'll buy it when it breaks through the resistance, and then they'll uh, sell it when it uh, gets high enough. 20, 30, 40% profit, or whatever their, whatever their goal is. And uh, you can do that. At this point, I like to buy and hold. Like Hawaiian Electric, it used to be 1990-something, 1995, and now it's 40-something. Over time, I see the price of most stocks going up. Over time. So long-term, for me, I see buy and hold. Using a limit, because... Prices will vary from day to day, so you can maximize your gains through limits. And you can minimize your loss on the other end through limits. You have to be specific and careful, but you don't want to you don't want to put the limit um, too close to the price right now because you, you're you're limiting your gains on the other side. If that's what you're going to do, if you're going to buy the stock at um, six and it goes to five fifty, but then it goes up to seven or eight or nine, and you you put the limit too low, I mean to sell, you know, too low, clo too close to the price that it is right then, then you then you could lose an opportunity. But you can use limits. But if you don't care. If you say, well, I'm going to be better safe than sorry, you can do it that way too. But use limits wisely. Use limits wisely. So, um, peace out. Live long and prosper. Have a jolly good day. And God bless America.